why is it slow? Well, it's blocking. It's not allowing me to do other things that I might need to do as a process. I can be doing tons of CPU intensive work and you just blocked me? How dare you? That is rude. The oldest trick of the book to do asynchronous IO is to offload it to a thread or another process. So we're still doing synchronous IO, but someone else is blocked. Not me. I'm free. I'm free. As a main process, I'm free. I'm just going to spin a process and I'm going to ask that process to actually do the IO for me. We need to start with the idea of synchronicity versus asynchronicity. I talked about this many times in this channel and my podcast. Essentially, to be synchronous is think of it as a client. You're calling some sort of an API, some sort of a backend, some sort of a server. Doesn't matter. If your call blocks the execution of the rest of the instructions in your program, that is a synchronous call. We call this API synchronous because it did not allow you to move to the next instruction unless you get an answer. Okay, so you're blocked. And when you're blocked, uh, you don't get to execute the rest of your instructions. Asynchronous, on the other hand, is you run and you delegate that job to some other party often uh, and then you move on and then sometime later you either check if this is ready or you get a call back like with node.js how node.js does it uh, that hey your result remember this thing that you asked about a few milliseconds ago it's ready you can you can get the results here so that's the gist of synchronous versus asynchronous execution okay and and we can dive into details just just by that but we want to kind of move that into the io concept so what does it mean to do a synchronous io we're, we are kind of uh giving some concrete examples here we're doing an io uh, that means it's either a read or a write in this context since we're talking about postgres we're not talking about network which is its own beast we're talking about files right we're reading and writing to desk right and we're dealing with system calls that is the kernel system calls that allows us to read from files because database is just a bunch of files believe it or not yeah shocking right the data the, the kernel provides you with a beautiful system calls that allows you to do io often all of these methods are synchronous that means read for example is a system call that allows you given a file descriptor that you have opened for a file on disk i want to read that file and I want to put whatever I read, this many bytes in this pointer, copy the data and move it to this memory location where it lives in my user space. That's a read call. And that is a blocking call. It's a blocking call. If you call that, your process will switch from user mode to kernel mode because you called a system call. And then your, that's it. You cannot move to the next instruction. You cannot. Your process is blocked because it's synchronous, right? And until the kernel takes that read, talks to the uh, I/O controller and VME or whatnot, does the actual block read, uh, uh, gets the result. We're talking here about buffered I/O, so we're writing into the page cache to the kernel page cache. Uh, and then gets that uh, get a copy of the uh, of that whatever we read into the page cache and then we get you now from the page cache to your memory location and that is a cpu cost you're copying data from the page cache into your specified buffer okay so that's a read write is identical right? it just works the other way right? 
but it's synchronous. Right? So I'm locked when I do that. What's wrong with that? Well, if it's wrong, if, if you're doing a read, you get something and you read it. And think of it, implement a full table scan. You read, get something, process it. Read, block, get something, process it. As, it's, as opposed to read, 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 execute, and then let me worry about that later. So yeah, think about it. Why is it slow? Well, it's blocking. It's not allowing me to do other things that I might need to do as a process. Like I can have, I can be doing tons of CPU intensive work and you just blocked me? How dare you? That is rude, right? So synchronous I.O., that's it, blocking. Asynchronous I.O. allows you to uh, unblock yourself. Well, the, the oldest trick of the book to do asynchronous I.O. is to offload it to a thread or another process. So we're still doing synchronous I.O., but someone else is blocked. Not me. I'm free. I'm free. As a main process, I'm free. I'm just going to spin a process and I'm going to ask that process to actually do the I.O. for me. Guess who's doing that? Node.js. Yeah, for the longest time, Node.js exclusively worked on that mode. For files. For files. Don't yell at me. For files. Network is a different beast. I talk about all of this, by the way, in my Node.js course, if you you're interested to know the details and the inners the inner the inner workings of this go head to node.win w i n it will redirect you get you a coupon worker thread beautiful design nothing wrong with that All right so so let do the same synchronous io but let someone else get blocked so we're still getting blocked right and node.js by the way uses a library called libuv to implement that Piece, right? uh, in recent releases, they switch to IO ring, which is what we're gonna about to talk to next. Right? But essentially, the worker pool is a very nice idea to do asynchronous IO. It's just like let someone else be blocked. It's a very simple design, yet we still give the feel of asynchronicity. Okay, so that's that's asynchronous IO. Now, asynchronous I.O., again, I'm talking about file I.O. here. Nothing about network. Different beast again. Here, asynchronous I.O., there is a new interface. I say new. It's been there for years now. It's called I.O. Uring, which is a shared memory between the kernel and the user space where the user can submit a job and the kernel can pick that job actually does the read and then writes back the results into the um, in, into the shared memory space and then the current the the, cur the user can check if the result is ready so it's a pure asynchronous model if you really think about it someone else is doing the blocking read and that's the kernel right we're just offloaded the game that's the whole the game by the way we just tell someone else to do it it's just we present it in a in a pretty way, okay? So everything at the end of the day is, is synchronous. There's no escape. Someone else has to pay the price, right? Okay, so that's IOU rank. Of course, uh, I think Node.js supports it. Right? I keep referencing Node.js because oh, Node and all these framework and Postgres, they're all software. And they all need to read from desk and do network and they're all kind of a back in infrastructure, which is the specialty of this, cha uh, of this channel. So synchronous I.O., asynchronous I.O. briefly. 